Hi, Captain Paul Powles here. Today we're going to go in depth on how to clean a walleye from start to finish and throw in some tips. First thing we're going to talk about today is your game plan. Making a game plan, are you going to eat the fish the same day? Are you going to keep them for a couple days in the freezer? Are you going to store them for later? So those variables are all important to decide. Remember, most of the time that people are catching walleyes, they want them for table fare. So treat them like food and they're going to taste that much better when you cook them up. When I make an ice bath, I'll take a large bag of ice, probably a 10, 15 pounder, I put it in the cooler and then I add water and then just toss the fish in like that and they slosh around in it, all the blood comes out and they're, they're totally encapsulated by cold. Some people will just take an old Pepsi bottle or a bottle and fill it with water and only one side of the fish is cold and the other side is mushy. When you make an ice bath, the whole fish is completely cold. When you bleed a fish prior to cleaning, two things happen. Number one, your board keep, stays a lot cleaner. And number two, the fish doesn't have any blood on it and the fillets are just snow white. When choosing a cutting board, it's not so much the board that's as important, it's the height that you put it at. So you want it right at belt level or just below your belly button. That's ergonomically correct that you're not up here trying to clean fish or down too low that you're gonna get a really sore back. One of the big questions I get asked all the time is about sharpening knives and the, and the best answer to that is don't wait till your knife gets dull. What I do before I put my knife away every time, I'll run it a couple times on the steel, just like that. Not a lot, not a lot of pressure, just a couple times. And then I finish it off with the ceramic. This comes with a lot of the Rapala products. It's got a course on one side, a couple strokes with the course, and then three or four on the, on the soft side. It's a fine. People ask frequency of how often you, you clean the fish. You'll know when it starts dragging through the flesh and it it's, needs a touch up, that's when you do it. You don't wait till it gets totally dull. I'll do, I'll do a touch up every five or six fish and then after doing 20 or 30, I give it a good one before I put it back in the sheet so it's ready to rock next time. question I get asked a lot of time is why I leave skin on when the fish go home with my clients and the reason for that is by rule you have to have identifying marks. So I take a whole fillet and I leave the entire skin on. You can leave a piece on if you're just having fish that night for dinner, but when traveling from place to place, you must have skin on the fish that identifies it A as a walleye. You can't ch chunk it into pieces. It has to be the whole fillet so the ministry can look at it. Some areas have slot limits. They might even want to measure them. Good idea to get in the habit of leaving the skin on until you get them home or even just until you're ready to throw them in the frying pan. One of the important things when you're cleaning fish, and I do not do it without this, is this glove. It's a Rapala product. They come in sizes from small to large. A good thing to do prior to using it is make it wet, because then it grabs the fish. So we have a slippery, slimy fish. We have an ultra sharp knife. It's not a matter of if you're gonna cut yourself, it's how bad the cut would be. Buy one, they're worth it. This fish just came out of the ice bath, it's ready to go. I see people, they take the guts out, they cut the head off, they do that. I'm in a hurry, I wanna give the people the, the best product I can, and that's where the R12 comes in handy here. I make a cut just behind the head. Now I use down pressure down the whole spine, and I follow that spine all the way down. Then I'll take the rib cage out. The knife will take the path of least resistance, you don't push real hard. So I'm using up pressure to just separate the rib cage from the fillet. See how nice and white the flesh is? That's from bleeding the fish. Now I'll take that fillet and throw it right in another ice bath. Everything's gotta be cold, makes a big difference. Flip the fish over, same thing. Down till you feel the spine, turn the knife. All the way out to the edge. I discarded the head and the entrails there, everything in the bucket. Same thing for the rib cage, just a little bit of pressure and the up pressure, separate that rib cage from the rest of the meat. So now what I'm doing is removing the skin, get a hold of the skin, take the knife all the way down, out to the edge. Now on every fish, they all have a lateral line and the walleyes in particular is a little bit more, it tastes stronger. How I take the lateral line out is I make a little cut on either side of it and you end up like this. And then what I do is just pull gently like so, and gently like so, and that removes that lateral line. All the pin bones are in that too. 
So now that fillet is completely boneless. I'm constantly running my fingers along to make sure that it's completely boneless and it's ready to rock. So once I get them home, I do this. Take regular tap water, put my, all my fillets in there, and I add some salt. Everybody asks me how much salt, and I say just a little, not really, lots. A big handful. Don't worry, your fish isn't gonna be really salty when it's done. This is just to clean them for storage. I'll put in a handful like that, and I mix it all around. A little bit of ice water. That's taken off that last little bit. Total time for this ice bath, minute or two. Just cleans them up, cleans them up, takes off the little bit of blood and, and any uh, remnants like that, chunk them in pieces, and then bag them up. I, I'll pat dry them on a paper towel, and then put them in Ziploc bags, or if they're ready for the frying pan right now. Just dry them, and away you go. Once your fish are all cleaned, and they've had their, their last ice bath, and they're ready to either do one of two things, freeze them, or eat them fresh. Ideally, vacuum seal is the best way to go, but not everybody has that luxury. The other thing is I'll put them all together and put them in a Ziploc bag, and I'll fill the Ziploc bag with water, and then I'll submerge that bag almost to the, everything except the, for the zipper part on the top. That'll remove any air from it. And then as you're pulling it out of the water, just pull the zip closed, and it's pretty much airtight. I've removed my walleye from the ice bath. I take my knife and I tap it along. Soft. When I hit the softness, the head's here, and I get a spot where I'm on flesh. I make a diagonal cut all the way down behind both fins, front and back. Do the same on the other side. For demonstration purposes, I'll flip it back and forth. You don't need to do that at home. Straight down. Now, three sections of the knife. The tip, the middle, and the bottom. I use them all separate. There's a reason that blade's designed that way. The tip's for intricate work. This is for making slices, and this is for, it's got more power and rigidity for cutting through bone. So what I'm going to do is make a cut here, and I'm going to follow the spine all the way out to the edge. I'm using down pressure right along that spine all the way out to the tail. A little up pressure on the rib cage. Just gently get behind. You don't want to muscle it, or you'll cut right through the fillet. Just nice and easy. Just slight motion strokes with it. And remove that rib cage. Same on the next one. Again, just behind. Jumple, gentle upswing. Take your knife, get a hold of it with the glove. All the way out. When you just get to the very end, back it up a bit and cut off that tag end. So you're left with identifying skin. Same on the other one. Out to the end. Remove the skin from the flesh. Second fillet. Then when you get them home, remove that little tag because you don't need it anymore in the garbage. Same on the other one. And then a little cut on either side of the lateral line, and then a zipper. Same on this one. Zipper it out. Cut them in portion size. And then into the ice bath. Good information to have before you go out and pick what knife you want for the job is how many fish do you actually clean? One of the, the parameters that I tell people to, in deciding is if you clean a lot of fish and you're fishing every weekend and you're eating a lot of fish in your home, go for the electric. Spend the money you're going to get the value out of. They're more expensive, but in the long run it saves you time. In my situation, I'm cleaning 25 to 35 fish every charter, twice a day. I clean a lot of fish. If I do it with a blade all the time, my arm's going to get sore. There's problems that go with that. If you're only going to get a couple for dinner one or two times a summer, I would go with the blade. But if you're cleaning a lot and a lot of different species, I would make the investment on, on the Rabelar 12. 
lot of differences between these two knives. One is detail, small intricate areas. The other one's for slabbing them out and getting it done in a hurry. Uh, neither waste a whole lot of meat if you're careful with them, but this thing's a beast and it'll cut through a lot of fish in a hurry. This will do the same thing, you just need more time. Sometimes it's a matter of how many fish you have to clean or how fast you have to get it done. The R12 comes with two in the package. Lithium battery, that battery can charge in less than an hour and holds 80 minutes of fillet in time. This comes in handy, especially when you have larger fish with bigger spines and bigger ribs, you can rip right through them. Dual reciprocating blades. What reciprocating means is they go back and forth and saw like this, so you don't need as much pressure. They're coated for easy cleanup and it glides through the flesh. I really like the way this knife is designed. It's, it's lightweight, it's ergonomically correct, it fits in your hand, it, it fits nice, and it's not tiresome when you got a lot of fish to clean. Also comes with two sets of blades, six inch and seven and a half inch. I prefer the seven and a half inch, but if you're cleaning perch or crappies or smaller fish, the six is perfect. The other thing that's really nice about this is everything stores in this nice little case and it's all set up for different compartments. You got your charger, you got your blades, you got your spare battery. You can zip it all up, store it in your boat, in your truck, wherever, and you know to just grab it because it's everything's in one spot. I do a lot of fishing shows and I ask this question all the time, how many people are familiar with this knife and every hand in the room goes up. Grandpa had one, your dad had one, and chances are you have one. This is the mainstay of the Rapala family. It's the birch handled fillet knife. Main feature of this knife is the blade and it's hand ground European stainless steel. Holds an edge and is ultra sharp as well. The handle on these knives is all varnished birch. Comes with a sharpener with two different stones on it, coarse and fine, and the leather sheath as well. The birch handled fillet knife comes in a four, a six, a seven and a half, and a nine inch blade. Depending on the size of fish you're cleaning, you got you covered from all of them. That's it for my demonstration, folks. Hopefully it helps you. There's nothing more rewarding than catching your own fish, cleaning your own fish, and taking them home and feeding your family with them. If you need any more information, go to rapala.com to view all these products.